Hi, and welcome back. Today's topic is uh, pretty messed up. Pretty, cur <laughs> pretty <laughs> cursed. Maybe feels like a different dimension. Maybe a twilight dimension, perhaps. Maybe feels like you're in that sort of uh, zone. What the fuck is happening? Hey guys, today Professor Jordan is going to teach you about one of the worst accidents in movie history. The Twilight Zone was a popular TV series created by Rob Serling in the 1950s into early 1960s. It's believed to be one of the greatest TV shows ever written or ever made based on its influence and overall quality. Most recently in 2022, it was number 12 on Rolling Stone's top 10 100 TV shows ever made. So what happens when you take a popular TV franchise and you make a movie out of it? Kids fucking die! Right, let, me, let, me, let me hold back. Let me calm down. We'll get there. We'll get there, all right? Let me start at the beginning, all right? The Twilight Zone was a science fiction show depicting horror elements primarily. It has a whole term based on the show. When you hear somebody say, oh, that's the Twilight Zone. I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. That shit's the Twilight Zone. This shit belongs in the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone was not the Twilight Zone before the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone created the Twilight Zone, which the term is based off of. You following? You keeping up? The show coined the term the Twilight Zone. There was no Twilight Zone before the show. And that's, you know, that's pretty huge, I would say. You know, you don't hear people going around saying, wow, that's a family guy. Well, maybe you do. Fuck. So at this point, everything was going well for the TV series. So what comes next after you've already pushed the barrier and you've pushed the, the envelope of your already existing property? Well, shit. Get a movie. Get a movie based off your show. I mean, look, Simpsons movie, one of the best movies, <laughs> a big budget movie, of course, like produced by Steven Spielberg himself. Why not? Full creative freedom. You don't have to deal with the rules of TV. You get a bigger budget. Why? I mean, why not? It's the obvious choice. So that's what they did. That's what happened. Steven Spielberg came and he produced and he wrote and he directed uh, and kind of got different directors to put this together and make a movie based off the show. Twilight Zone the movie was is an anthology movie made up of four different segments, three of which were remakes of classic episodes and one reworking of an episode. I'm not going to go full into all of the different segments. We're only going to be focusing on one today by the title of Time Out. It's based off an episode titled A Quality of Mercy in which there's a racist ass bitch lieutenant who becomes less racist i don't know i didn't watch it why would i you think i have the time for that but this being a reworking instead of a remake gives the director john landis plenty of wiggle room and creative freedom to kind of make it make it its own thing so that's what he did the, the episode and the segment are you know sort of in the they have similarities but overall the overarching is quite different um it's pretty much disconnected for the ent entirely so this segment of the movie pre previously mentioned directed by john landis is about a bitch-ass racist named bill connors who is hanging out with his bitch-ass friends and uh he hates anybody who's pretty much not on twitter i guess so he prefers facebook users it would seem him and his buddies are at the bar he's bitching and moaning about other races and um how he didn't get a promotion but his jewish co-worker did over him I gave it to that jew bastard Maybe it's, you know, obviously not do or has nothing to do with the fact that possibly he's a better worker than him. But, you know, we're, we're, just, we're not going to question him. You know, we're not going to question those kind of thoughts. All right. So anyways, he starts using slurs and complaining about the blacks in America and the Asians and how they're the problem with the country. And it's just a quite a big yikes, I would say. I mean, Jesus, man. I'll tell you why. Because of the Jews because of the blacks, because of the Orientals. You ranting, Bill. Yeah, I'm ranting, why not? You know who owns my house? Jap Bank. I'll tell you something else, he lived not more than six blocks from my house, six blocks. And he's uh, going on with his Fox News spiel when this dude asks like, hey dude, can you, you, fucking, can you fucking stop? And that pisses him off, so he, you know, continues it and then he ends up leaving the bar after being nicely told to shut the fuck up and uh, winds up in World War II France where there's Nazi soldiers invading. They see him as a Jewish man and uh, try to arrest him, you know, try to take him as a prisoner. There's a language barrier there, so he obviously can't explain, hey, no, I'm one of you, you know, like, I'm, 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 I'm a Nazi. So um, they end up chasing him, getting this full-on little chase, like Outlast. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, he ends up on the ledge of a building and he's standing there and they shoot him and he or they shoot at him rather they don't actually shoot him unfortunately and he falls <laughs> Wakes up in old Bama. You know, you'd think that uh, old Billy boy dies and goes to heaven because he's in 1950s Alabama where he is face to face with the with the clan. You know, another circumstance where he's like, yo, I'm one of you, but they don't buy that shit. They, they, they see him as a black man and they're about to lynch him. Not even kidding. They are going to lynch him. And uh, he, he manages to somehow escape and he goes into a lake and... Uh, emerges on the other side in Vietnam Vietnam uh, during the Vietnam War in a jungle and he's being shot at by American soldiers and uh, a grenade gets thrown at him which sends him back it doesn't kill him unfortunately again he's cheating death so many times in this situation just fucking die already Bill the, the explosion sends him back to France again where he's back with the Nazi soldiers and they throw him in a train car and they're sending him away to a concentration camp and uh, as he's in the train car, he's looking at us. He, he's back at that bar that he initially left at the beginning. And he's yelling and screaming and calling to his friends. But they don't see him or hear him. So good riddance, you fuck. And uh, the train car leaves. And he's gone. Later, bitch. And that's how it ends. That's it. That is the ending. I think it's a really well-written story, especially for it being written in the 80s. It's still very relatable and very, you know, it still holds up narratively-wise in 2022 with, uh, you know, people still being racist bitches. But wait, there's more! <laughs> yeah, so I just described the final product of the movie. Two specific Warner Brothers executives that I could find named Lucy Fisher and Terry Semmel wanted the character to be more sympathetic and have a redemption arc. They said he was too unsympathetic. Yeah, that's that's the point of the whole segment. So in the Vietnam, Vietnam portion of the segment, Landis reworked it and came up with an idea that Bill Connors could save two Vietnamese orphans. The idea is to rescue them to sort of make himself seem like a better person even though we clearly know he isn't so they had to rewrite this and reshoot it and at this point california labor laws were in effect that children could not work at night he didn't even have the parents or the children sign a waiver or anything to circumvent the law he just had he just paid them under the table so they just got paid cash or whatever however that works back then and for to allow these children to be casted and filmed in this scene at night when they're legally not supposed to he casted seven-year-old micah din lee and six-year-old renee shin yi chen really hope i pronounced those correctly they were added last minute after everything else had been shot trying to film this last scene to give this character some sort of sympathy or redemption, if you will. He would simply scoop them up and carry them under his arms and kind of lead them to safety during his escape. It's a simple enough concept. But Landis added a helicopter. He had a fucking helicopter. But not just a helicopter, explosions. We got fucking Michael Bay out here adding helicopters and explosions to a somewhat of a grounded, sympathetic, simple idea, you know? Just do the thing. You don't need to add all that, dude. All of which, by the way, were not mentioned to the children's uncle who had agreed to let them be casted in this. And even going as far as telling the parents of the children not to mention to the safety people on, on, on the crew that these children were involved in this scene at this time. So he was actively trying to convince them to hide this from anybody who could get them in trouble. So pretty fucking evil. The helicopter was to be piloted by a Vietnam War veteran, Dorsey Wingo, which by the way, he had voiced many concerns with the safety of this scene, all of which were completely ignored. So now we're on June 23rd, 1982. They were all set to film and finally finish this segment and finish the movie. This was it. This was all they had left to do was this last bullshit effort by the executives to make Bill Connors a good guy for some fucking reason. Wingo had his helicopter stationed 25 feet while hovering near a large mortar. He spun the helicopter 180 degrees for a different shot on the camera when a mortar fired off and hit his tail rotor 
on the helicopter, detaching it, spending the sending the low hovering helicopter in, in, to spin out of control. I, I should add that they were filming during this because this was supposed to be in the movie. They were filming. Um, so you can see this on YouTube from a bunch of different angles. Morrow was carrying the children through the water and he dropped Chen, the young boy, and quickly tried to grab him and scoop him back up. And the helicopter fell on top of him and the two children. Morrow and Lei were both decapitated by the main rotor of the helicopter while Chen was crushed. They were all killed instantly. Blame was passed around to and by everyone. People were saying that the explosives went off far too early. Others were saying that the director was telling them, lower, get lower, like through the radio to, you know, get that perfect shot. Real shitbag move, man. A lot of which of these comments lean towards strict and direct negligence from director John Landis, who seemingly did not give a fuck about the safety of his crew, his actors, or these two children who are working illegally for him right now. It's all very sad and very disgusting. A lot of the comments were saying how he shrugged off comments and completely ignored any criticism or any suggestion of change that's saying this isn't safe, we should not do this. He wanted it and that was it. That was exactly how it was supposed to go. It was how he wanted, was how it was going to happen. So you might be thinking Bill Connor is the dickhead, but really it's fucking John Landis, that motherfucker. Dude, fuck this dude. This was followed by a trial which further proves that the U.S. legal system has always been shit. Landis and the rest of his crew were all tried and acquitted. There's that word. All charges of manslaughter during the nine-month trial from 1986 to 1987. The family of Morrow and the, and the family of the children were all settled, presumably million-dollar cash-out payments, but no amount of money can bring your family back, so... I mean, you can you can have your millions of dollars, but you still lost your kid it, for something that they didn't need to lose their life for. Or on the topic of cursed films, this has got to be by far one of the most tragic and crazy events that has ever transpired. Three people lost their lives due to complete negligence and no no care from the director, and that just should not happen. You know that, and luckily hasn't happened to this degree since and uh you know at least we hear about it a lot more now uh this was a huge story back in the 80s but i was aware that not a lot of people knew about it including myself i'd only heard of this a few months ago so that's why i'm talking about it because i find it so morbidly interesting in a, in a sense um and it's just just such a fucking tragedy john landis you're a bitch all right Fuck you. Uh, Steven Spielberg even had a quote saying no movie is worth dying for. And I agree. Especially if that movie has a 59% on Rotten to <laughs> Well, all right, guys. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy, even though the topic of the conversation was a little bit more bleak than usual. And uh, if you didn't know, I mean, there's quite some changes production-wise that has been a major pain in my ass. Um, I'm hoping to get used to it pretty soon here. Um, I've never had a script, as you can probably tell in my past videos. So having a script of somewhat is a little bit of a change and a little bit more difficult to get used to. I like to just fire off the brain, um, which, you know, it doesn't make for great content. But, you know, what do you, you got to do? So, um, yeah, if you guys are more interested in this topic, there are plenty of articles you can read. I read through the Wikipedia for this for preparing for this video. But there is an episode on the Shutter docuseries titled cursed films uh they do an episode about this accident that you can kind of go into depth and uh you can see interviews from people who worked on the set and uh kind of get um an idea of what it was like working with landis and what transpired from the mouth of someone who was there so it's you know very interesting uh very cool obviously not cool but uh you know, it's, it's it's definitely interesting and morbid. Your morbid curiosity will always carry you into places that you don't intend to get into. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, we try and do better production quality videos such as this. If you can even call it that. I don't know. We'll have to see all those pieces together after I record it. Um, but, awesome. You guys have a great rest of your day, night, whatever it is, wherever it is. I don't know. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.